Hello, and welcome to the last section of Chapter 1, which is Section 110, and 110 will deal with mathematical modeling and variation. So far, we've talked about a couple different methods for fitting data to um, a specific type of model. And if you think back, like if we're given two points on a line, we were able to find an equation for the line. This is one method that we can use. Now, in this section, we're going to look at what we call the least square regression line. I will show you how to do this on your calculator, but right now the least square regression line is a line with the least sum of square differences. So if you were to go and subtract two points and then square those and add them up, that is the least square regression line. Now we're going to look at an example here in just a second, but it says some data plots include what we call an R value, and this is a correlation coefficient. And what this does is it tells us how close our data was to being like linear or whatever model we're looking at. Um, and that, therefore, you want your R value to be 1 or as close to 1 as possible. The farther away it gets from 1, the less accurate or the less on track your points are. And this is an example you have to write down. I just wanted to show you. Um, if you look at this data set right here, it looks like we're looking at insured commercial banks um, per year, and it looks like we're starting out in 1996, 97, 98, and so on. And if you look, we have data points. Now, the data points lie in a relatively straight line, okay, but they're not in an exact straight line. This black line that goes through is what we call a line of best fit, okay, and the equation of that line, and I did all of this in Excel, okay, but the equation for that line is a negative 0.28-ish x plus 11.14. And our r squared value, which is that r value we were talking about, that's going to be, because it's 0.98, that means our points lie pretty close to being on a straight line. The farther away this number gets from 1, the more sporadic these points will become. Another form of modeling, um, or actually variation, that we're going to look at is called direct variation. Now, direct variation, I know you've had in Algebra 2, but it looks like something like y equals kx, okay, and you read that as y varies directly with x, or y is directly proportional to x. Uh, and y equals kx for, not, for some non-zero constant k, so k is the constant of proportionality, constant of variation, those are kind of terms that are used interchangeably. So let's go ahead and look at an example to see how this works. Example 1 says that the state income tax is directly proportional to gross income. Your tax deduction was $46.05 for a gross monthly income of $1,500. We want to find a model that gives a state income tax in terms of the gross income. Now, because you're given this phrase here that says directly proportional to, you should automatically be thinking y equals kx. And then it's a matter of plugging in um, your numbers in the correct spot. So we know that your deduction was $46.05. So I'm going to write that in for Y. And our gross monthly income was $1,500. Well, $1,500 is going to represent our X. So I really have some constant, which I don't know times my $1,500. So now what you'll see is we have to solve for K. When we simplify this, $46.05 divided by 1,500 is equal to 0 0.0307. So now this is our K value. In order to write a model, which was asked right up here, we need to rewrite this in an equation format. So now that we've solved for k, we're going to have y equals, k is a constant, so I'm going to plug in that point zero three zero seven and write that as x. So now I can plug in any monthly income for my x value and come up with the amount of tax I'm going to have to pay. We also will see direct variation as an nth power. And an example of this is your area of a circle formula. We know the area is equal to pi r squared. And this is read as y varies directly as the nth power, or in this case it would be as the second power of x or r. 
y is directly proportional to the nth power, and we can say that y equals k times x to the nth power for some non-zero constant k. Again, k is a proportionality constant. So for example two, it says a distance a ball rolls down an incline is directly proportional to the square of its time. During the first second, a ball rolls eight feet. We want to write an equation relating the distance and time. So based on what was given, we know that distance is equal to some constant k times the square of our time, or t squared. So now, in order to solve for k, we are going to have to plug in what we know. So we know that our, it says during the first second, or when t is equal to 1, and that's squared, we're multiplying that by k, our ball rolls 8 feet. So based on this, I know that k is going to equal 8 divided by 1, which is equal to 8. So our general equation then is y equals, or I'm sorry, d equals for the distance, 8t squared. And this would be our generic formula in order to find the distance a ball is rolling. Then part b says how far it will go in 3 seconds. So now I'm going to go d equals 8, and we're looking at our time, and again we're squaring that. So that gives us 8 times 3 squared, or 8 times 9, which is going to be 72 feet. Another type of variation that we have is called inverse variation. And this looks something like y equals k divided by x. Now sometimes you will see this as, and let's, let's walk through this, if I want to get k by itself, we're going to have to multiply by the denominator. So every once in a while you will see this written as x, y equals k. Personally, I will always go and isolate the y variable so that it's easier, for me anyways, to tell if it's direct or inverse. This is read y varies inversely as x, or y is inversely proportional to x. And k is again some constant. Now for example three, we're looking at the gas law for um, like chemistry, and it says the gas law states the volume of an enclosed gas varies directly as temperature and inversely as the pressure. And it gives us a value for pressure, temperature, and volume. So it says write an equation relating P, T, and V. So it tells us right here that the volume varies directly. So if it varies directly, we know that V equals K as the temperature, which is T, and inversely as the pressure, so divided by P. So this would be our equation relating the P, T, and V. Now we have to go ahead and plug in the values that they've given us so that we can go ahead and solve for T or K. So when we do that, we end up with K, and let's go ahead and rearrange our equation to get K by itself. So when we do that, we get V times P divided by T equals K. So now if I plug in my value for V, I have 8,000 cubic centimeters times my temperature of 294 Kelvin divided by my pressure, which is 0.75 kilogram per centimeters squared. And when we simplify this, and let me just kind of slide this over, we end up with a K value equaling a thousand divided by 49. This is just a fractional version in simplest form. So now for part, the second part where it says find P when T equals 300 and V equals 7,000, I can now go in and rearrange my equation for P now. So P is equal to kt divided by v. And we just solved for k. k we said was 1,000 divided by 49. We're going to multiply that by our temperature, which I gave us at 300 Kelvin. 
and we're going to divide that by our volume, which is 7,000 cubic centimeters, and we find that our pressure, now on my calculator I got 300 divided by 343, but as a decimal that's approximately 0 0.87 kilograms per square centimeter. And the last type of variation that we're going to look at today is called joint variation. And it's Z equals KXY is what the formula looks like. And we read this as Z varies jointly as X and Y, or Z is jointly proportional to. And again, we have that same um, constant of proportionality. So our last example deals with joint variation. And it says simple interest for certain savings accounts is jointly proportional to time and principal. After the first quarter, the interest of the principal of $5,000 is $43.75. We want to write an equation that relates I, P, and T, and then find the interest after three years. So first of all, we were told that interest was jointly proportional to. So I equals jointly proportional to means that we have the constant K times the P for principal and T for time. So now that I have my equation, I'm going to go ahead and solve for k. So k is going to equal i divided by p times t. And if I plug in my values, I know that my interest was $43.75 on 5,000 times. And because it says the first quarter, I have to show that as a quarter of a year, or my T value is going to be one-fourth for the value that I plug in. And if I simplify this, I found that K is equal to 0 0.035. So now that I know what K is, I can go ahead and solve for the interest after the th first three quarters. So I know that my interest is going to be found by taking that K value of 0 0.035 and multiplying it by my principal value, which was 5,000 still. And now my time is going to be 3 quarters, or 3 fourths. And when you simplify this, we'll see that we've earned $131.25 in the first uh, nine months of the year. So this will conclude the last example of section 110 and that just leaves us with our fun fact. And today's fun fact is a cartoon that is courtesy of www.foxtrot.com. Have a good day.